you. Thank you. And I, and I just think the, the imperativeness is clear. The continuation of, of this plan is something that uh, the chief housing officer, uh, uh, Jessica Katz, has rolled out and really spent so much time up in Albany. Uh, I'm sure if you Google her address, it probably will show you an Albany address. She's been up there so much trying to fight on this issue, knowing how imperative it is uh, to do uh, housing. It's a part of our overall plan, um, including NYCHA in our housing, and including um, how do we uh, renovate some of the units. It's just an overall plan. The missing piece is playing out right now. The table is set. It's now time for Albany to serve the right meal, and that right meal is a combined housing plan that we can do the building that's that's needed. So why don't we open up to a few questions, we do some hot topics, but, but keep, keep in mind it's hot out here, so I'm not going to be here a long time. If the legislature doesn't approve the Fort Bruna extension, is there anything the city can do on like a project-by-project basis on its own, or are these projects just stalled for at least another year? Okay, when do you want to get that? Sure. We're, we have been and will continue to use every tool that we have at the city level, and um, but we need either the extension or a replacement for 421A. It's really that simple. Any other tool is imperfect. It doesn't get us there. It will waste too much time. And the crisis that we're facing is a real one, and it has gone unabated. So while we'll use every tool, we need a version of 421A or the extension in order to keep projects like the one that we built on this site moving. Take a look at all the different parts of the housing bills that you're asking for. It's approximately 100,000 units of housing that would be able to be built. I'm wondering if you got these 100,000 units of housing, what that would do in terms of helping the homeless get out of shelters and use their vouchers, and also helping with the migrant problem that you seem to be drowning in the city is really drowning in. Uh, right, and I think as it was mentioned, as uh, uh, Local 79 uh, indicated, uh, that there is uh, almost this hypocrisy that in one end uh, we are stating let's place people into housing and then in another place, number one, don't build in my district or community, and number two, we're going to hold up the housing uh, process and the legislation that's needed. Uh, the first order of business that we must all define that we have a crisis. We have a housing crisis. And if we're not on that same page, there is not a luxury of let's wait. And this is going to help us in other plans we're doing, some of the things that uh, the chief housing officer rolled out of getting people into those available units, uh, some of the creative ways we're going to do it. But everyone must face the crises that we are facing. Every poll is showing that it's a top number one or number two issue, housing. Public safety and housing, public safety and housing. And, you know, not getting those 100,000 units is really going to impede our 500,000 moonshot that we're reaching for. We have to build housing. The supply is not meeting the demand. Hi, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Uh, good, how are you? Speaker Hasty said yesterday that basically there's not enough time. Session's supposed to end on June 8th. Wondering, do you blame Governor Hochul for not getting a lot of this done in the budget, for taking it out, knowing that at the end of session, lawmakers kind of don't want to tackle something as complex as what you guys are asking for? We're all in this together. Um, we are responsible for producing a plan, and that's what the team did. Uh, uh, lawmakers are now responsible for looking at it. The governor is responsible for signing. All of us are in, in this together. If it fails, we fail. And so um, pointing the fingers... Uh, at that is not the way to point people in the right direction to get housing. And so we're in this together. This New York is a team sport. We've done our job. Uh, we presented uh, the right legislation, and now we're hoping that the lawmakers use the next couple of days to really solidify what we presented. Do you plan on going to Albany? Whatever needs to be done to get this done, I'm willing to do it. Uh, could somebody just explain briefly the, the status of this particular site and, you know, did it qualify for 421A and because of the expiration stall, like what exactly is, is that, that happened? Yeah, we can, 
we can follow up offline unless you no. Nope. We'll, yeah, we'll connect to the right. Yeah, I'm easy. I'm so low maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do another hot topic? Because we would like to end this off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you didn't answer the second part of my question. Okay. Which is what effect, if you were to get this 100,000 units, what effect will it have on the twin crisis you have of the homeless in New York City and the migrants in New York City? Well, it, the, at the end of the rainbow is a place to live. Whatever barrier is in that way is going to impact those who are looking for a place to live. Not only the migrants, not only uh, the 40-something uh, thousand people who are living, uh, you know, in our sh shelters, but those who are coming home from college that are looking for places to stay, those who are moving through the city. So everyone on this side of the wall is going to be impacted by what is going to happen on the other side of the wall. Everyone will be impacted. So we to tell the legislature that what they're doing is causing a logjam that's making it difficult for you to deal with these twin crises? Uh, well, well, number one, I think one of the most important things we can do is hire you as one of our lobbyists because we've been saying that over and over again. So, you know, sometimes people listen to you. So we would love for you to come up and, you know, help elevate with Jessica and the team and uh, Tiffany and the team of what we have been doing. Uh, but you're right. It is a log jam that we must make sure that it does not stop us from building units, putting shovels in the ground. So we're gonna ask folks if you guys can kind of step off to the side. We're gonna take Thank you. Off Thank off. you all. We're gonna do a, a few few off topic. All right. Good job. Good job. Good job. Off topic. Stay next. Hi, Mr. Mayor. What's going on, Dana? I'm curious. Do you support Commissioner Molina's decision to stop sharing news of Riker's deaths with the press? Uh, listen, uh, Commissioner Molina. Uh, has been an amazing commissioner. When you look at the numbers, when you look at the number of, of uh, violent actions on, uh, on Rikers, people, I remember when I inherited this, uh, when I pulled in Commissioner Molina, we were having uh, a substantial number of people who were out sick, not coming to work. All of you were talking about it. You were all writing these stories about the violence, writing these stories about all of these issues. Molina has turned it around. And uh, I support him to do the job I hired him to do and whatever methods he needs to do it within the boundaries of not violating any laws or rights of people, I, su I support. Right. But I, mean, I, I guess I'm wondering if, if you were bothered by the report that came out from the monitor that basically found the Department of Correction was, was just not sharing details about some of these really serious incidents. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I will be responding to that report. There are clear items that the commissioner is supposed to report on. They're very clear. And when I sat down and did my review, there was not one item on that list he was required to, be, to report on. Not one. That was not put in the report. It was put just the opposite. And so I'm going to uh, respond to what I believe is happening um, with uh, how this oversight is taking place. He did not violate any of the rules on what he was supposed to report on. Not one item, not one. But if you would have read the report, you would have thought just the opposite. So I think there's something else going on with this relationship that we're having. And I have been extremely restrained, uh, but that level of patience is running out. I have a two-part question. Yes. Yesterday, your budget director uh, said that of the new tranche of federal money of $800 million, the city is only expected to get between $30 and $40 million, which is really a drop in the bucket. And last week, he said that he thought that there was going to be at least another billion dollars in expenses because of the increase in migrants coming in. I wonder how that you're going to address that in the budget negotiations with the city council and whether this ongoing discussion about migrants could delay the budget because you need more money to be directed towards this problem. And that's the, that is the job of uh, Jock G.I., who has done a, an, an amazing job navigating us out of this budget crisis. Uh, and I'm still hearing city council members every day uh, calling for more spending, more spending, you know, you know, spend more millions here, more millions here. I'm just not quite understanding, do you know, folks understand the basic le le level of accounting? 
you spend what you take in. And uh, we have to balance a budget that dropped us with a $4.3 billion uh, price tag out of nowhere. Uh, we only received, uh, uh, look to see 30 to $40 million from the $800 million that uh, Senator Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, and the other delegation leaders were able to get. And we have to also make sure we provide the services to the city. And so, uh, you know, we, we have to balance the budget. That's what the law calls for. We're going to do that. It's going to, it's going to be painful. I've said this over and over again. This is not new. We could just go back to the tapes. Every service in the city is going to be impacted by this asylum and migrant crises that we are facing. Uh, I hope not. I'm, I'm hoping that the city council realize uh, that they realize the urgency that we can't make the mistake that we witnessed in Washington uh, with the uh, debt ceiling. Uh, it is imperative that we get a budget done. You know, I know primary elections are coming up, uh, but we cannot put politics in the way. We are ready. The negotiations should start now immediately because it takes time to do this. We are ready. We want to sit down with our uh, council colleagues and hammer out a budget for the people of this city. Are you asking for more money for the migrants? For the from here, from the feds and the state. Both. Are you going to be asking the feds for more money? Yes. Or are you going to be asking the city council to allocate more money to the problems you're facing with housing the migrants? Well, well the, the allocations of dollars, I think that, you know, hopefully they will look at some of their discretionary dollars uh, to assist us. Uh, but the budget is determined by the um, executive branch, and they vote on that budget. Uh, we're going to show them the money that we need to, we believe we need to allocate to deal with this problem. Um, off of Marge's question, did FEMA notify your administration that localities are only able to uh, receive 10% of this next group of money? Because, again, just as your budget director said, and as you had said in the previous months, uh, the administration did anticipate a lion's share of this, you know, federal pot of money. So, you know, what happened there? When And when did FEMA disclose this information to you guys? Well, we didn't think the lion's share was going to turn into a cub. You know, the amount of money that we receive is, I think, is embarrassing uh, to what the city has been handling. And then to add to it, Bernadette, uh, just think about this for a moment. The bordering states, some receive more than us. They're using the money to bus people to New York. I mean, that can't even be logical. And so uh, I don't know where the rule co is, is, has come about for this 10%. Uh, I'm not aware of that. If they, if they notify, notified our budget director, that was not shared with me. So I don't know where the 10% rule comes from. Uh, but we need to reexamine how the money is used, which is very important. And we should have it proportionate to the number of migrants that are in the city that is being impacted. The blueprint for just about all of the bordering states is when migrants, asylum seekers come inside their, their municipality, send them to New York, Chicago, Washington, and uh, uh, look like Los Angeles is now on the list. Steve, 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 do you want to take us home? Could I? Let, let's keep going. Got it. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, on the DC 37 flexible work agreement, I know you've had some strong words in the past about working from home. You said you can't stay home in your pajamas. Now you have this agreement with DC 37. What would you say is behind the evolution here? Well, first of all, you can't stay home in your pajamas is not a strong statement. Uh, you know, uh, the, the um, health officials are shown loneliness is like smoking several packs of cigarettes a day. And I don't think many of us realize that some of the practices that we participated in after COVID, how it was impacted on our health issues, you know, how it was impacted in so many ways. Look, I'm a seven-day-a-week guy, and how I believe is not for everyone. And I'm not so rigid that I'm not willing to sit down and figure out how do we reach the goals that we want. And there are some clear criteria that we put in place that we announce uh, our flexibility and work schedule uh, this is for UNDC 37 members. Uh, it has to be a job that could be done remotely because, as you know, not every job could be done remotely. Uh, and there's some other items that we pointed out that the team will really go over uh, to safeguard this. But it has to be about how do we get our city up and operating. And I'm willing to sit down. Uh, Henry Garrido has been an amazing partner on so many levels. And if he wants to sit down and figure out how do we deal with 
of the employment part, by bringing flexibility, I'm willing to do so. You know, like, like I'm, I'm just low maintenance, man. I'm not, I'm the easiest person to deal with. Thank you. Can you tell us?